Hey, this is part two coming on uh, the video on checking my uh, tailstock alignment. I was just checking out the condition of this uh, column on the more, more, it's more speed here. Just looking real good. Hit it with a little kerosene and oil every now and then. Okay, let's go in there and do part two. Hmm. I've got some important news. For the trolls and haters out there, Max Grant at Swan Valley got a Dean Smith and Grace Lake. So you can get off my back and um, hate him. Go over and see that. He really rubs it in, too. It just pisses you guys off. Just terrible. Okay, I'm going to start this thing up and make the last cut. Hey, now this is a lot better um, tool to um, check this. I took another cut on this thing, uh, and uh, there's going to be a bit of deflection, even though I'm using a very, very sharp tool. And uh, so I'm going to check the taper here. Should be able to see this one. Okay, it's on zero right there. This reads in one thousandths. And uh, this is a vintage style snap gauge. It's got this little stop here, see? And it, it'll keep it on center. So I'd have it on zero there. It's hanging close to zero here. Maybe a thou over. Let's see how we're looking here from a thou over. Yeah, well, it looks like that. This uh, doesn't have to be the most accurate. Uh, and you're not going to get great accuracy on uh, old uh, hot rolled steel either. Just gummy kind of slow stuff. Okay, it's still on zero. Uh, a thousandth, within a thousandth of zero. Mm. Okay, now we're starting to drop. Looking about three thousandths. But, um, smaller. Let's see what's that. Oh, let's see, that's up to five thousandths smaller uh, than here. Yeah. Okay, let's move it in. Let's get it to where it's straight. Pretty straight. Not quite there yet, are we? Uh, let's keep one there. Oh, well, that's getting a little closer. Maybe this gauge moved just slightly. Get back over here. Uh huh. I want to know where it drops off. Right, starting right there. Starts getting noticeable. It's getting worse. Okay. Yeah, it's starting to get uh, to that 5,000 out of whack from about here to here. So. I take note of it by moving the tool to here and if I need a high accuracy spot I want to reach over to that and not have the tool right in front of that place so I want to have the carriage on a better spot extend the tool over to machine like that area <laughs> okay okay I've got a lot more to do now I feel that the way it is right now everything's just fine to um, uh, put stuff together for that uh, tailstock turret there okay moving over to the Monarch 10 double E I believe next okay hope you enjoyed this have a have a great day Stay safe. Bye-bye.
Well, Chloe, are you ready for dinner? You are hungry, aren't you? <laughs> okay. The end of another great day. Bye-bye. Hey, popping right back into this whole video here that I'm uh, almost ready to load. Now, when I uh, was checking out the tailstock alignment, which is really quite good, you know, and that uh, that drop off in diameter here has to do with the carriage and the ways. Now, I haven't, I had the top of the carriage off, but the bottom of the carriage here, um, there's gibbs right here. Front, this, this one um, is identical to the one on the back. And the one on the back's got a travadile hanging over, but you can see I can get a right angle slot into that. Now, when I'm backing this carriage up to where the trouble started, because I'm investigating a little bit here, I noticed that the carriage was getting tight. So I'm going to back off that gib, and then I'm going to work on the rear gib too, which is a, a totally different construction. It's a big, heavy strip of metal on an angle. Maybe I'll show that. But uh, what I'm going to do is just back this stuff off a little bit, then, then use the machine a little bit, let stuff kind of settle in, and uh, do a test like this again. Okay, but I think this is the culprit here. There's a bit of wear on the ways, but when you start getting uh, something in a bind, or, or like the carriage coming off of a bind, because it, it gets tighter, and, um, <laughs> has the little problem up there, it gets worse. So I'll back off the gibbs and uh, give that a try. I don't think all oh, it's lost. You know, I think you'd squeeze that down to a couple of hours, maybe nothing, you know, it can be that way. So I think that's the, uh, the best plan so far, you know, and it usually works. Um, I haven't moved the tailstock at all. The last uh, job it was on, uh, the tailstock uh, had been maintained in a good spot for itself. I broke all of the, the bolts loose, so it can be adjusted. But I haven't moved it. So, things are, I, in my opinion, are looking really good. And I'm going to iron out the best I can and, and find those sweet spots and the not so sweet spots, right? Keep the carriage on, <laughs> on the sweet spots and reach over to the not so sweet spots. It's one of the tricks of running old junk machinery. But there's still a lot of life left in old machines, you know? And you know, turning a, a straight piece like that gets really expensive for a machine to be able to absolutely turn that uh, piece straight. And I'll, I'll show you an example. That uh, piece is about 15 inches long. This machine here, I can turn that piece, that 15 inch length piece within two ten thousandths. I'm not saying you can, I can do it. Okay, well, I think that's a pretty good game plan. Just back off those uh, carriage gibs on that axle some a little bit and continue to use the machine. It's certainly helping with the spindle bearings and uh, the surface finish and, and the racket that thing is uh, putting out. So, uh, okay, back in there, I love the video. I got to, uh, I got Chloe's eating right now. And I'll eat something, take a bit of a nap, and wait for it to cool down. It's quite hot now. Get up pretty early in the morning and uh, figure out something cool to do. Okay, bye-bye.